This is the Vega Pool Captain 700, and it's basically a smaller, lower powered version than this, the Captain 1200, which is an absolute beast. Yeah, this is a lot lighter and it's just so much easier to haul around. It has the same features though. It looks exactly the same on the front panel. It's got everything the bigger one has, exactly the same. So you've got your USB A ports here, 18 watts. You've also got USB C as well. And you've got DC 12 volts at 10 amps, the usual sort of car accessory port. And then under this flat, you've got the charging ports as well. So mains power in and also DC power in as well. So you can plug solar panels directly into this, which is really cool. Now, the cool thing about this is it also has a UPS function as well. So you can actually have power passing through this. So you plug your mains power in the front, it will charge the battery and supply power out of the back. And this thing has a 700 watt pure sine wave inverter built into it. Now I've actually got the Euro version here, um, which they sent me ahead of time. The UK version will obviously have the UK plug, proper UK plug on it, but it's no drama. I can just use one of these things for now. So energy wise, this has 672 watt hours of power. It's basically powered by a 30 amp hour, 22 volt battery. So you can also see there the other information on the Anderson input, you can put 12 to 30 volts in there, um, 240 watt max. And it also says AC input 600 watts so yeah like the captain 1200 this fast charges in about an hour as well from the main so that is super convenient i love that about these vega pool um, power banks the fact you can fast charge them and it's safe as well because they use lithium ferrite phosphate lifepo4 so it's not going to burst in, into flames or do anything unexpected that being said you shouldn't really charge batteries overnight or unattended anyway so aside from that also you've got wireless charging up the top i think that's 15 watts maximum and then you've got a really bright led light which also acts as like a strobe flashing kind of emergency thing the captain 1200 has a light on either side but the 700 only has one on the left hand side so what can it power then is it up to its 700 watts continuous power rating let's find out with an electric fan heater that's actually rated at 2000 watts or something like that but there's two settings on this and the first one's about a thousand watts i think so yeah we'll see what happens so let's just plug it in actually these adapters are quite handy because it means you can have the cable exiting upwards rather than sort of down so to activate the inverter, you just hit this button here on the side. So the inverter is now on. Now the cool thing about the displays on the Vega Pool is it, it's really clear. So it's showing you've got 96% total battery, um, you know, power there. And it's also got this sort of estimated time till discharge um, kind of gauge on there as well. So that's really useful to see how long this thing's going to last. Now, of course, nothing's actually on at the moment. The fan heater is not actually on at all. Um, and it's showing 45 hours of standby. That's because the inverter inside does take some power. And that means that, you know, if you left this on, then it's just gonna literally drain in 45 hours. Now this is something that is a bit of a pain with these sort of power banks with the inverters built in, because I would prefer it if they had sort of some kind of eco mode where they would like literally just sense if there's something like a load connected and then go into like a sort of long sort of standby mode, which the Victron stuff does. If you build your own systems, then you know, you might be familiar with the Victron brand, but those inverters have like an eco mode. Not seen it on kind of these kind of power banks yet. Um, hopefully we will at some point. But I will say these Vega Pool power banks do have like a shutdown feature, which will shut this down on a predetermined kind of, you know, time period. So I'll show you that in a minute because that's done via the app. So this does have an app and Wi-Fi connectivity as well. That's pretty cool. Anyway, back to the test. So we've got the, the fan heater here. I can just knock it into its first setting, which I think is just the fan. So you can see we've got 30 watts or so just for the cold air blowing like that. Now let's give it the beans. So put it on the 1000 watt setting and you see here that's gone up to 955 watts. Now what's interesting about the Vegapool stuff is even though it hasn't really got enough continuous power to power this fan, um, this fan heater, it's still doing it because it's a resistive load. So what it's actually doing here, because this is a heater, it's actually reducing that power down to its maximum continuous, which is 730 watts. So you're still getting the fan heater working, which is quite interesting. You're still getting it working, but it's just not putting out, you know, its maximum power. Now this will obviously only work with like resistive load stuff because obviously if you add something electronic that took 900 watts, then it's probably gonna freak out. <laughs> it's only getting 730 um, but it does mean for the resistive load stuff you can actually use it and this would probably work i mean if you crank the power up even more 
yeah see it's not going to handle that at all but anyway we're probably going to get an error message now yeah that's it so that's that surge was just way too much for it um that would have been about 2000 watts so you know that's fair enough it self resets in literally a couple of seconds and then the inverter turns off and then you can fire it back up and you know you probably shouldn't really do this it's probably worse actually using this in the rain actually <laughs> and no these aren't waterproof either don't know what's going on with the weather in this country at the moment but anyway the point is because it's got a higher surge rate in it's actually good for like stuff like power tools and higher higher current stuff that might need a bit of extra oomph to get started um, but once that set was down the initial startup in rush current um, is lower then it will just be absolutely fine and exactly like the captain 1200 you've got a parallel socket on here as well so you can parallel two of these together to give you like 1400 watts continuous so that's neat unfortunately you can't parallel these two together that would be cool but you can't so this show you the app i was talking about it's called vega pool you can log in using your google account you don't have to create another account i'd rather it wasn't linked to any account really to be honest but that is how it is and um, so you can see here you've got your control panel showing you 98 percent battery there available time the inverter's off at the moment you can turn the inverter on and just literally tap that and it will turn on and then you should see that available time that will probably um you know start to adjust as, as it goes on um dc output you can turn on as well usb obviously you've got wireless charging on the top as well you can turn that on and off so basically it's self-explanatory there um, you've got the flashlight you can remote control this now this app is actually done this is doing this via wi-fi not bluetooth so this device can be on your network and yeah it will just literally be be able to be controlled over wi-fi which is pretty smart um, you've got automatic shutdown this is what i was talking about so i've actually set mine to about three hours so it will just turn off after three hours um, which is pretty pretty good um, and then you've got screen standby time stuff like that battery protection to not let it discharge more than that um, amount I think that's what that is um, and then you've also got a slow charging mode so you can you can you know have this charging a bit slower than if you don't need to have that fast charging um, enabled you can turn that down I find that useful for like stuff like where I've got my solar powered trailer um, I want to just plug this in on the mains lead I know it's not completely efficient but you can just plug it in on the mains lead but it's a little bit 700 watts is a little bit too much for my my small circuit which is tops out like 500 watts so it's good to have a lower power um, charging option as well and then you've got screen brightness and other things like that that's about it for the app it doesn't really let you do anything it would have been nice if you could see sort of graphs and you know your discharge and other bits and pieces but other than that um, it's pretty nice you've got a temperature gauge on there as well so that's nice to sort of keep keep an eye on things and that is the app guys right so even though this thing doesn't need a charge i've just plugged it into the to the mains so you can see 150 watts going in so it says 21 minutes until it's fully charged it's only 93 percent you know it's, it's hardly discharged at all so um obviously it doesn't need a charge but, but obviously this is showing the lower kind of charging rate now i'm going to turn it back to the high power charging rate on uh on the app and see what happens right so now you can see it's charging at 600 watts and it's going to be five minutes until it's fully charged it takes about an hour to charge this from from pretty much zero um to a hundred percent so amazing there's all sorts of ways you can charge this bad boy you can plug it into solar panels you can just plug it into the car um, accessory port so like your 12 volt accessory jack you can charge it from that just have it in the boot every time you go out it's going to get a bit of charge that kind of thing um, but obviously the quickest way to charge this is from the mains right because that is where you're going to get that 700 watt um, charge in an hour job but overall i'm super impressed with the captain 700 it's a great little device it's just easier than carrying around that big 1200 um if you unless you need that power then something like this is is ideal because it's it's just small it's like the size of like an old like kind of pc tower case something like that so it's really good for that i mean even helen uses it for like hairdressing sometimes she plugs in the hairdryer straighteners clippers stuff like that she can do hairdressing in the garden it's, it's just really flexible to be able to just move power around and also don't forget you've got the ups feature so you could use this just like a ups um, i've tested that out on the on the captain 1200 before um in here have the whole of this room basically running through the captain 1200 and then if you get an interruption on the mains it just kicks in and just carries on it's absolutely seamless and it doesn't even affect like computers and sensitive electronics and stuff it's really fast so yeah good device for just having around the house as well um that light on the side is obviously great because you know if you do end up in a power cut and it's dark just reach for this little thing stick the light on and you can sort of get going straight away so nice little features there and the wireless charging on the top as well 
Absolutely brilliant. As I say, going forward, it'd be nice to see manufacturers sticking like an eco mode um, on the inverters in these things because the inverters have like a draw. So if you, it will eventually flatten this uh, power bank if you just leave it on. And for like instances where you might have like a garage or something that's like remotely away from um, your house or something like that, that doesn't have power of its own, um, something like this is useful for powering the lights in that and stuff like that but the problem is you can't just leave the inverter on all, all the time and it's a bit inconvenient basically you'd have to reach for the power bank turn the power bank on then reach behind it turn the actual inverter on and then your lights would come on it's not ideal it'd be better if it could just be set to just be sensing if there's a load and then you could just walk in the garage turn your switch on and then it would just fire up the inverter that would be good of course if you've got solar connected to it it doesn't really matter because it will just keep charging up anyway but in the winter you might struggle with it anyway guys super impressed with this one hope you enjoyed this video little intro to the captain 700 i'm going to play around with this a bit more and i'll give you my thoughts again later but yeah in the meanwhile don't forget like subscribe do all the usual stuff and i'll catch you next time